Jose Lucanuz, Marilyn Million from the People's Court. Uh, it is a very big show today. Uh, we're interviewing the author of a, uh, of a new book uh, with revealing a lot of the secrets behind the Church of Scientology. It's an excellent uh, book. He's an excellent author, Lawrence Wright. Also an Anderson Live investigation. We're taking you undercover to reveal the top five new retail ripoffs that salespeople use to get you to spend more. I this love is fascinating. This. I love this. Because I hate shopping. I and love I'm, shopping. And I'm convinced. First of all, I'm always convinced that salespeople think I'm stealing for some reason. I don't know why that is. <laughs> But also, I, I, I'm always intimidated by salespeople, and now I know why, because they have all these tricks. I, you know, no matter what dress I pick out that I have no business picking out, I will walk out as though I have put a sausage casing on, and they will invariably say, you look fabulous. <laughs> you are rocking that, and I know I'm not. Uh, you know? <laughs> well, there's a whole bunch of tricks that they're using that you don't even realize. We're going to reveal those. We use all the hidden cameras to kind of expose it. It's really fascinating. Also, our super fan Candace Brooks is back fresh from yesterday's <laughs> inauguration. So we're going to talk to her. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about some news in the first 15. I was also obviously um, at the inauguration. Um, I drove back actually all night to get there. Candace also drove back um, all night. It was, I mean, it was an amazing day, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, independent, no matter what. It's just an exciting day. It Such a, an it always exciting. It reminds you of how proud you should be. Yeah, and America. the tradition of it all. And, and, uh, and the you fashion know, of it all. And... The fashion of it all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, it's amazing how many people want to see what Michelle Obama That's it. is wearing. That's it. Yeah. Because you know. there's a whole bunch of people watching who are the politicos. And then there's a whole bunch of people who are just all about the dress. Right. And she, that's her in a Tom Brown dress and coat that she wore, um, that she wore during the day. And I guess a, a belt by, by Gap that she kind of put over it. Oh, Jay yeah, Crew is it? There's always oh, a little Jay Crew or Jay Gap. Crew, okay. And, yeah. and um, uh, I think she looks amazing. Tom Brown is usually an, a male designer. He, he, makes, he makes these men's suits. I don't know if you've ever seen them. It's like the sleeves are like this. Like, <laughs> like the sleeves are like this. And the pants are up like here, basically. <laughs> they're very fashion. I guess they're very fashionable, um, and they look cool. But um, I, I'm too geeky to wear them. Um, but uh, but she looks amazing, I think, in that. And then for the much evening, much she wore this very very red dress. I thought that was really pretty. You um, have those arms; you can pretty much you know pull off anything. Wear everything. Yeah. Do you guys like the dress? Do you think she looks great? Yeah. No. I think she, really does. I think she does as well. Uh, and the dress is by a guy named Jason Wu, who she wore. It surprised she a lot of people. She wore him the last time. Right. Yeah. She wore Jason Wu four years ago, changed his career forever. Uh, he was interviewed I by CNN a while ago. I pick somebody else's You wanted to somebody bless. new? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I did think that. Well, right. you, you agree with that? Candace is like, yeah. wait a Candace, are you still wearing your dress from the ball? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I am. That's the walk wow, of shame. We look call at that you. the walk of shame. When I wanted to be on time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Candace, you look beautiful. I figured I shouldn't change. No, you look, you look very nice. I want to hear all about your inauguration experience. Um, but uh, you're looking very, very Michelle Obama. I mean, you're Thank looking. Is you. that Jason Wu? No, no, no. It's not Jason Wu. <laughs> I don't know who it is. <laughs> I think but, it's Escape. Apparently, four years ago, when Jason, you know, they don't tell. I think it's kind of cruel. They don't tell the designer. That Michelle Obama is going to wear the dress until they walk out, basically. So the designer has no idea. So apparently, four years ago, Jason Wu was like this young, this kid. Suddenly, was watching. He was eating Domino's pizza, apparently, in his apartment, so watching neat. the ball. So All neat. of a sudden, Michelle Obama walks out in his dress, and he starts screaming and running around his apartment. <laughs> I imagine he had the same reaction. I'm wishing he had taped it. You right, know? right, exactly. Like calling up <laughs> his mom. Um, but uh, a lot of photos uh, that were uh, that were kind of funny. There's a photo actually from when Kelly Clarkson was sitting, in, and, and sort of President Clinton looks like he's photobombing <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> um, I think he's checking her out. Maybe check her out. <laughs> It also in that photo. I think it, he's checking her out. In that photo, for a minute, it looks like he has the microphone. So it's like, hey, <laughs> Mr. Microphone. Um, I also tweeted a photo. You know, when you were on CNN, you really only see us from kind of the waist up. And we were outside on this platform for about, I don't know, like 14 hours or so. I mean, total. You know, I was there from like 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. I took a break. I was there from 7 to, to 11 at night. And it gets really, really cold when you're sitting there. So this is actually, we all look like, <laughs> I, I felt like we were all like. like my grandmother. <laughs> I know, like we're all like grandparents on a cruise ship, you know? <laughs> like, where's the canasta? Oh. 
It got very, very cold, so we're all sitting there in blankets. Later, they gave us these blue blankets that matched the carpet, and it all looked like we were wearing Snuggies. <laughs> um, yeah. So I heard, we, we haven't met before, although we apparently intersected at an ATM once. Yeah, I was, I was once at an ATM in a mall here in, in Manhattan at the, the shops at Time Warner, and I was taking too long with my card. I put in my, my code wrong or something, and I could feel a person behind me, and I'm thinking, if I were him, I'd be angry and then so so I'm like uh, I, I gotta turn around it's Anderson Cooper standing behind me. <laughs> was I, that, I wasn't rude or anything. No you were okay, delightful good, you good, didn't good. do a thing you were looking at your own thing okay, it's just good. my neuroses but I turned around and, I, and all I could think was oh he gets his own money too he does his own stuff too you know? like, <laughs> and then I'm wondering is there anybody else that's watching the two of us at the ATM saying right. I, don't know, I don't know who that guy with the gray hair is but that's just Millian. <laughs> 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 right. They're like, who's that old guy with Judge <laughs> Millian? No, no, you are. My husband is prematurely gray. Oh also. yeah. Well, no, I used to be prematurely gray. I'm now, sadly, my age has caught up with my hair. Yeah, so it's a little sort of, lighter. He's getting yeah, a little lighter too. Yeah. So now, but I, you're still hot. Well, and so I, I have a bone to pick with you because I have gotten word. Word is filtered down to me that you think I need Botox. Oh, did it? I can't yeah. imagine how that happened. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, no, I just. Uh, we Terrence, were, who would look surprised right now, except <laughs> he, he would is look so Botox. Surprised if it, you know, you can't I'm just his... glad that I'm not the only one who is willing to come clean and tell Anderson Cooper that he needs Botox. <laughs> I, I didn't tell Anderson Cooper that he needed Botox. I told you that he needed Botox. Well, if you tell me, I'm telling him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the I, first thing I came to our, our meeting. A little bit, just right there. Right there. <laughs> For, we have our... so, listen, listen, listen. listen. Have... <laughs> when he was a baby, he didn't have that, and he was beautiful then, too. And, <laughs> it's, and, and you're beautiful anyway. And, right. So, it's you all think, magical you think, beautiful. You think I mean, this, look, this line here? Just a little. If I could bathe in Botox, if I could, <laughs> if I could fill a tub with Botox <laughs> and then go like this under it and just stay there for 30 minutes, I would do it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's completely safe. And, you know, and then, you know, you just like just a little, it's just a little higher. I feel like little, once. Just, and I, I can look surprised. Look at, have you ever looked at me on people's court and said, oh, she's showing no emotion? No. Okay, come on. Yeah, but, so. but, but you have bangs, so. I have bangs. Or, you know, I have wisps. Michelle Obama wisps. has bangs. Oh, okay. I All have right. wisps. All right. <laughs> well, Terrence just got Botox yesterday. How often do you go for Botox? Well, it depends because it's like kind of like a crack habit. Like yeah. you start thinking you, you're under control. No, you, uh, you. They say you can go four or five months. Mm -hmm. I think you can go like three. <laughs> you four. think? Oh, there. Uh, if someone's looking at you, if you, people would stop looking, then I could go once a year. But you know, if people's, you're under the lights, and it's just sort of, you know, you. Just just how to keep it fresh, keep it fresh. <laughs> oh, Doesn't it? Up. No, no. It seems like everybody, any place you go now, they give out Botox. I mean, there's like dentists yeah. who do Botox. I feel like soon McDonald's is going to start offering it. Yeah, I hope so. Drive through. <laughs> no, no. So. But, but I, have, I can't tell you how many of my doctors who were, it, my, the doctor who, who does me was an internist, and uh -huh. she's like, the heck with that. And so, because it's very lucrative. Um, right. Because it works. It works. <laughs> Who wow. just came clean? I think Kelly just came clean. Yeah. Who? Kelly Ripa. Your friend Kelly Ripa said she yeah. it keeps her young. Oh yeah. yeah it's just I, a I did not know that. Well, awesome. Kelly looks amazing. She does oh, no. whatever she does. Well, she you looks use amazing. creams. You use. Kelly other is an exercise. I mean, Kelly exercise. She's in the most yeah. amazing shape. Yeah. yeah. No. If the she Botox could... did her from the neck down, I'd really be in the bathtub. I mean, she looks <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Aren't there people who do like Botox on like other parts of their body? Oh, do they? Yeah, like on, Armpit, on armpits. Well, armpits, armpits? but also like. What are you like, gonna do with your armpits? No, to stop sweating. But also knees. And oh no! You know what? They t I hear that they take away migraines. See, this is uh, this is propagated by the Botox doctor. No, no, this like, is propagated by the person who told me that he took away his migraines. Uh, okay. and I can't say who it is because my husband will kill me. So last night, as I. <laughs> <laughs> Last night as I was driving up here, I, uh, I stopped at McDonald's for my favorite treat. Like after a big event, like, you know, I've been working a lot of hours, I like to treat myself. And the, for me, the biggest treat in the world is, is getting the number one meal at McDonald's, which is the Big Mac and the, the large fries. And I look forward to this. I know, I, and this is not a plug or an endorsement. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. Everybody had, mine is a sausage at McDonald's. It is my biggest like treat. And, and, I, and I get the, wal the fruit and walnut salad because I think it's healthy. I don't know, I, I'm sure, I don't know what it is. How do you have room yeah. for it? But <laughs> I was so disappointed. I can't tell you how much I look forward to this. It's like a big event for me, like once every, Maybe month I'll allow myself to have this. I give him the drive-thru. Lovely lady named Claudia in the drive-thru. She and I are chatting. I sign an autograph for her. She's thrilled. I drive away. I'm thrilled. I open it up. They have not salted the fries. I cannot tell you how disappointing it is 
when you allow you yourself. You are very high maintenance. When, no. If you need someone salting well, no, your fries. No, I mean, because I mean, McDonald's, they don't hand out the salt automatically in, oh, in the drive through unless you ask for it now. Oh, yeah. That's they used to just like to pour in this fry. I don't want people messing but, with but, me. But usually they're yeah. salted to perfection. And I was like a block away already. Did you go back? No, because I was, I mean, it was like midnight and I had to get to New York and, but I'd I. I'd have gone back. I can't I'd tell you, I, I, this is what, how lame my life is, that this <laughs> is such what I look forward to and that this was such a major disappointment in my life. I don't blame you, but I would have gone back. You would have, really? I would have absolutely gone back for the salt. Were you a block away? I didn't, but she'd been so nice too, then I didn't want to make her feel bad. Oh, so, that wouldn't make her feel bad. That I would make her know. feel good that she gave you salt, that she salted your fries. <laughs> really? That's, yeah, that's yeah. kind of. That she hardened my arteries have, just yeah, a little bit? Just oh, that she, yeah. yeah, no. Oh. A, we have a saying in Spanish, I said, we will get a sal. When, when someone's flirting, you say that egg wants a little salt. Right? Oh, really? Yes, yes. I did not know that. <laughs> yes. Really? So if, she, if you came back and asked her for a little salt, I think you would have made her day. Really? But that's when someone me. is flirting, you say that egg wants a little salt. That egg needs a little salt. Muy caliente. Ooh. I don't know what I just said. I have no yeah, idea you what do. I just said. So. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, uh, we were on, on the show a couple months ago, we had this calendar. You know, I always like kind of weird, creepy things. Where there was this a dental calendar, um, and it was the weirdest thing because it was this dental company that makes mannequins for dentists to practice on, right? And, and they, but they put them on people's, they dressed them up like they were real people. So it, they were putting them in all these odd, bizarre positions. And it was just so creepy. It was like the weird dental family at the, the pumpkin patch. So I guess this company saw that I had been interested in this, so they made a portrait of me oh my as a dental calendar. <laughs> yes, See, that is what I would look like, Botox. Botox. Look how and nice wonderful. you look, so wrinkle free. free. Solve the crease problem. The, there you go, that's the problem right there. You know what's sad? I'm actually gonna put this up in my office. I that's really, really like it. <laughs> I like it, it's creepy. Uh, coming up, we'll have more of the first 15. We're gonna meet a waiter who's being hailed as a hero. We'll tell you why when we return. That's a great story. Judge Marilyn Millian. Of course, all I see in those pictures now are my wrinkles. There you go. I'm yeah, telling you, we'll get them. But wrinkles. we'll get them. We'll get them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, at Twitter, uh, says a Twitter person says a new McDonald's special, one dollar Botox. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll say. Uh, I don't know if you saw this video. Amazing. Uh, out of uh, Madrid, Spain, a woman fainted on a train track. Take a look at this. And a, an off-duty cop was there, ran down the tracks, picked her up. Other people trying to tell the train to stop. This guy comes, picks her up, and she uh, was apparently okay. They gave her CPR, and she was revived. As I, I thought it was amazing how many feet forward she propelled because, it, I mean, I just... I know. You faint, you fall like a sack of potatoes down. She fell like eight feet forward. I know. It was a I little... kept looking for the ghost that was pushing her. Like, I know. It was a weird faint. Wasn't it strange? Yeah. Because she really went forward. That's how they faint in Madrid. I, I <laughs> the, This other story... because they stay up so late. I, yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> it's true. In Madrid, it's like... Dinner. Yeah, you have dinner at 10, children running around at midnight. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, more paella. Uh, it is paella, right? Yes, yes it is. Yes, okay. Um, I don't know. I just, I haven't been there. Um, in Boulder, this, this lady was sleeping. You saw this story. A woman was sleeping in her home. It was around 3 a.m. A a, a, this was in Colorado. A giant boulder comes crashing through her house, actually pins her in her bed. She had a broken sternum, a broken jaw. She was trapped underneath this thing, but she was able to reach a phone. And it, they, what they said was that she, if she had not like turned over when she started to hear the noise, that she'd be dead. Right. But what they also said was that her husband wasn't home and it was three in the morning. And I, I would like the answer to the question where her husband was at three in the morning, because I want to know if he was loosening that boulder from wherever the heck it fell down. I find it incredibly wow. suspicious that he was wow. not there, okay? And, th and then they quote him as saying, I told her that we shouldn't, you know, that something was going to happen one day. And she kept saying, no. I'm like, really? You know? You instantly go there. I, I wow. instantly went there. You are I, a judge. I want to know answers. Where was he? Do you have people all the time coming up to you for legal advice? And all like, the time. Hey, I got a problem. All uh, the time. Yeah? All the time. Really? All the time. It yeah. must be exhausting. Um, no, sometimes it's really interesting because it's so nuts. 
Yeah. Um, and and then I'm like, why aren't you on my show? You know. <laughs> but <laughs> no, it's okay. It's usually my 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 parents' friends just can't stop calling. Oh really? Stop. Just a little free legal just advice. Just a little free. Can you represent me on a ticket? I'm like, no. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> I did represent my dad once. Did you really? Yes, I did. I represented him. He said, if I could send you to Georgetown, you can represent me on this ticket. For a ticket? For a ticket. He made me go in. Of course, it was in the papers the next day. It was so humiliating. Did, did you get the ticket? Of course I did. You got, it all, got him off? Of course I got him off. <laughs> <laughs> How much was the ticket? Whatever it was, like, he kept telling me that uh -huh. it was the least I could do. Like, the $75 ticket was the least I could do <laughs> for what he paid for my tuition. Oh, that's funny. It was a matter of principle with him. That's great. I love that. Um, uh, there's another story, which I, I know you know about. Um, a, a waiter in a restaurant in, in Houston called Lorenzo's. Um, his name is Michael Garcia, and he has a regular customer, Kim uh, Castillo, and her family who have a five-year-old uh, child named Milo who has Down syndrome. They're regular customers. And apparently someone else, another group of people, came, sat in the booth next to, uh, to Milo and uh, Milo's uh, mom and asked to be moved to another section. So the waiter... Uh, moved the, the patrons who wanted to be moved. And then the waiter heard the patrons say, special needs children need to be special somewhere else. Meaning they didn't want to sit next to. And he got upset yeah. and he refused to serve them. He said, I can't serve you. And what was so impressive is that apparently that family were also regulars. Oh, is that right? I didn't yes. know that. Yes. So it took it took more nerve for him to do yeah. that. Yeah, and and a lot of people praising him for this. I He's been making headlines for defending this child. Michael Garcia is actually joining us right now from uh, from Houston. Michael, how you doing? I'm good. How are you today? Good. So, what made you step in and, and defend uh, defend Milo? Because it's the right thing, plain and simple. It's just the right thing to do. So he can't stand up for himself. You know, it just came so natural. What was their reaction? What was the family's reaction when you said that to them? They actually, they just said, if you can't serve us, then we're going to leave. And have they ever been back? I haven't seen them since then, no, ma'am. <laughs> do, do, do you don't mind that, though? If they come back, of course, we're going to welcome them with open arms. Of course, we'll serve, be glad to serve them again. Yeah. And he wasn't being disruptive like most, like, I mean, most, I, I, well, certainly my five-year-olds could be disruptive yeah. at, a, at a restaurant. And there was absolutely nothing going on other than him being there, correct? He was actually telling us about his birthday party. He had just turned five, and he was just trying to tell us about that and the gifts he received. He was just being a normal little kid. He wasn't, he wasn't getting out of hand. God he wasn't being that loud, really. Well, I think it's so nice that you, you stood up for, for this, uh, this little child who can't stand up for himself. <laughs> Um, and, you know, Michael, you spend all day, you spend all day waiting on, on other people. Being a waiter is, is a really tough job. I worked as a waiter. I was the world's worst waiter. So uh, I know how tough it is. So we're giving you a day at a relaxation spa in Houston. Uh, so enjoy that. Uh, get to be off your feet for a day. And uh, just wish you all the best. Keep, uh, keep on defending your customers. Thank you, Michael. And, you know, everybody else needs to speak up because, you know, there's a phrase that I never let my teenagers use and that I never tolerate from any litigant in front of me. If you've ever watched a show, you know that when someone says, well, he was acting retarded. Mm. He was being retarded. Yeah, it's about a, a, using a, it like a horrible the, word. Right. Use. And then a lot of people will just try to be polite and not say anything back to the person. But if everybody made a pledge to stop that, like, like he just did, yeah. then less people would feel comfortable I, using that phrase. Yeah. I will say I found myself lately getting more involved and like stepping in more in situations. Yeah. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older I and crankier. I'm getting older and crankier. Yeah. That's exactly what you're yeah. talking about. I, have no I, I was talking about anymore. last week. I, the, I saw a lady on the street trying to put a banana peel, used banana peel in a mailbox. And for some reason, I went ballistic. Like, it outraged me. What, why was she doing I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. She I mean, was, was she nuts or was she like, no, angry she was, at the she post No, she wasn't nuts. She was just like, oh, she was just she, getting there was rid not of a mailbox. There was there, not a garbage There was not a garbage on the street. She was trying to get rid of it. And I was like, you do not put a banana peel in the mailbox. Did you stop her? Yes, I grabbed her hand. I grabbed the banana peel. I put the banana peel in her hand. I marched her across the street. Don't you just want to do when you see? But that's awesome. When, when you see people toss something out a window when oh, they're driving. Yeah. Oh, oh. Or drop stuff on the street. It drives I, me nuts. Oh, it drives me well, nuts. Because I, I live, just... I live in an old firehouse. People are always standing out because and there's bars on the street. There's people always who choose to smoke right outside my oh, house and, then and they, drop they the drop butts. They drop the butts like that's I'm, not littering. Right. I'm like, hello, and I'm sure they call themselves environmentalists. I'm sure they're sitting yeah, right, there talking right. about like the environment. You yeah. know, people I don't respect the environment. <laughs> throwing the cigarette <laughs> on the street. I don't understand it. I know. Well, I, I think know. bars I just should be mandated. Bars should have to have 
a thing for cigarette butts outside. Well, now, streets, because now you got to be out in the streets. Right, you got to be on the streets in, in a lot of cities. Like so, so. I ought to, I should be mayor. Yeah. Yes. That's right. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, take a quick break. Inside a uh, fascinating new book all about the Church of Scientology, we wanted to find out why so many celebrities are part of this church. We'll meet the author next.